On October 18, 2019, about 30 people from six states gathered in Greeley, Colorado. Those present represented museum staff and volunteers, teachers, manufacturers, retailers, historic preservationists, model railroad club members, and of course, modelers who all share the common interest of developing and promoting youth in the model railroading hobby. During the morning session, introductions were made, followed by a general discussion about best practices that the various groups represented by the attendees currently utilize to develop and encourage interest in their younger members. There was a presentation by Karen Formico from Walther's about market research they had completed to determine trends and interest categories that could help us figure out how to reach young people where they spend their free time. The morning session concluded with a brief tour of the Colorado Model Railroad Museum for the participants. After breaking for lunch, participants reconvened to hear more best practices and strategies from Al Hovey of New Mexico, Blaine Holbrook from Utah, Larry Price of Denver, Colorado, and three of the attending Colorado Model Railroad Museum staff members, Norm Wolstein, Misty Treffrey, and Michelle Kempema. The meeting was concluded with a lively discussion about the common goals and purposes shared by those in the room and the development of a mission statement. Hi, I'm Karen Formico, Vice President of Marketing for Walther's, and I just wanted to spend a couple minutes and talk about why uh, we are so excited to be represented here at this meeting on youth and model railroading in Greeley, Colorado. I first got introduced to really the youth in model railroading when I was at the Salt Lake City National Train Show and I met Al Hovey and Blaine Holbrook who introduced me into all the wonderful things that they are doing for the youth to get them involved in model railroading and I immediately said I gotta be part of this. And at Walther's, this is really where our mission is taking us. We want to get more people, more kids, as excited about this hobby as we are. And so when I heard that they were going to have a conference specifically related to just how do we move this forward, how do we get the youth engaged, we just decided we had to be part of it. So that's why I'm here, and the meeting was absolutely fantastic. We learned so many things. We shared ideas from each other, who's doing what at their club, and how are they using it to engage youth. And those are ideas that I can take back to my organization and say, listen guys, this is how we can participate as a manufacturer in sustaining this hobby and making sure that it is here for the youth of tomorrow and generations to come. Several of the participants gathered back at the Colorado Model Railroad Museum to conduct a panel discussion about the day's event to let the world know what we talked about, why it's important, and how to proceed toward our ultimate goal of creating one or more scalable programs that any organization can use to interface with young people in a safe, productive, and inclusive manner that will promote the positive cognitive and emotional growth that model railroading offers. Hello, I'm Norm Wolstein with the Colorado Model Railroad Museum. I'm here with some friends. We just attended the Tracks to Success Youth Summit for 2019, which involved a variety of people from the industry, the model railroading industry. And we got together to talk about where we can go forward to help improve youth programming uh, in the hobby. Um, I've got Al Ho Hovey, Larry Price, and Blaine Holbrook that were attended, and uh, we just want to get everybody's feedback on uh, what they thought of the today's session. I'm Blaine Holbrook of the Northern Utah Division of the National Model Railroad Association, and uh, I was extremely thrilled with the fact that there were so many ideas presented. I like the idea of having more operations. We need to do a, add that to our pizza box concept. Um, Karen Formico was absolutely gracious in her presentation, and I was thrilled with some of the comments she made. I felt like I was doing some things correct, <laughs> especially when we're talking about old modelers that are so dyed in the wool and new modelers that are trying to get started, and it, it depends on excitement. So that was one big takeaway is I need to be operating more. 
And I'm Larry Price with the uh, Youth and Model Railroading Denver area. Um, I've been in doing model rail, youth and model railroading for over 20 years. And it was very exciting to see a lot of the people that are doing youth oriented clubs, um, getting youth into it. And the information I got back from Karen was very informative, realizing that yes, some of the stuff I've seen in 20 years has been kind of what I've realized what was going on. And um, I'm really hoping that this group of people here and the people that came to our seminar, we could really progress this farther and farther, you know, getting more kids and more youth into the model training industry. I'm Al Hovey from Albuquerque. Uh, I'm founder and leader of the Rio Grande Model Railroad Club. I was particularly uh, pleased with the interaction of all of the members that were there today uh, with Karen in the morning and uh, with my fellow friends here sharing about their programs in the afternoon. I think uh, the, the way forward for our group is to have an April meeting and stay in contact and share very positive things that each one of us are doing. Uh, the important thing is to remember that uh, each one of our programs is going to be different than the other because of background information. But as long as we're having fun doing what we are and the kids are number one in our programs, that's what counts. Yeah, I was particularly pleased with um, the wide and diverse group that was at the meeting. And even though we all came from a different perspective and we have different groups formed on different principles, <clears throat> the things we had in common were a focus on the youth, uh, human creativity, and helping develop them that creativity along with self-confidence uh, and providing them the tools to do that. At the same time, as was referenced earlier, we're all of a generation where we may be a little bit disengaged with some of the tools that the, those kids are used to using. So it was highlighted we need to focus on that going forward, use more social media, and in particular the ones that they use, like Instagram and Snapchat and some of those. So. We're coming up with a game plan. We've already got a plan to meet again early next year and uh, work on the next steps and uh, take it from there. Uh, so Karen Formick from Walthers was there and she's their vice president of marketing. Uh, but in her role, she felt it necessary uh, to develop some analysis, scientific analysis, using polling and interview techniques uh, to help guide the group on how we can address um, the issues going forward and reach out and touch folks. They uh, ran some surveys and did some hands-on interviews and they found areas where the kids would focus more intently, um, be more interested, um, and be able to relate better to uh, the hobby. There was a lot of discussion during the day that you know a, a kid that's three, four, or five years old could be introduced to the hobby using tools that were um, what some of the more senior folks may view as elementary, but they provided some skills that could be utilized later on as they got more engaged in the hobby. And um, Karen emphasized that and uh, again emphasized the social media tools that um, we would all benefit from becoming more familiar with. I think one of the things too that I came out with uh, Karen's presentation was the Generation Z is one of the things they were looking for as a hobby that they could take in as a career. And I think model railroading can be one of those hobbies. Um, as youth and model railroading, we have a lot of kids that have graduated out of the organization and working in real railroading. And I think that's what was really good to hear about, that the Generation Z kids really want to find a hobby that they can take in as a career. And I think that was really a, a good thing that, that I heard. And she emphasized that that generation, the younger folks, um, really want to enjoy their job, but they also want to participate in a job that's good for society, that gives back to society and helps improve the general lifestyle and culture um, that we all survive in. There was one comment she made about winning and losing, where there's a generation, millennials got 
really terrified of the idea of first, second, and third place, and everyone got a participation award. And now this new Generation Z seems to be able to handle that with more grace, and it's okay for first place, second place, and third place. So let's get back into a competitive spirit. And using competition, children jump at the opportunity to work and be involved in competition, and that was a nice thing to see. One of the things that I picked up on, uh, and I can relate back thinking about my own Model Railroad Club, is that uh, the activities need to be shorter in time frame and more visual and more hands-on. We probably have spent too much time on certain activities in the past, and we need to speed those up in the future. And there was generally, um, throughout the day, an emphasis on STEAM science, technology, engineering, art, and math, and how the hobby fits very well in teaching those concepts uh, to our youth. These concepts may or may not end up being um, the rest of their life and spending in the hobby, but will help prepare them for careers as they learn how to create, imagine, plan for improvements, and uh, implement those in their own lifestyle going forward. As the founder of Youth and Model Railroading, you know, I've been talking about this for over 20 years, trying to get other groups to start up train clubs just for kids. And I got Al get off his butt to start one. And Norm, I've been talking to Norm, and it's the first time I've met Blaine. But I think with the group of people we had today and with Karen, I feel more positive today than I have in the past. Because I think we've got a good group of people. We had a good conversation. We Sometimes we agree to disagree, but I think we're all kind of on the same track, so to speak. And moving forward, I think this is going to be a positive thing to do. We just got to kind of really make sure we know where we're going and how to, how to implement it. I don't want this just to be a conversation again. I want this to be a true moving forward type situation Absolutely. because the four of us can't just do it alone. One of the things that I brought up several times in the meetings today was partnerships between uh, manufacturers, Walthers, other train manufacturers, the Colorado Model Railroad Museum, any railroad museum, um, other national train or model train organizations. We really need to get those people to join us to promote this, to get the kids involved. Um, I've been talking about that for a long time. We just It's, it's got to be a full group effort uh, there was representatives from the NMRA today, and we mentioned that, that we really got, they don't need to be the sponsorship, but they need to be on board with this. So I think that uh, with, with everything's going on, we just need everybody to, to jump on board and, and move this forward. And the, and the other area we recommend um, are those organizations that are adjacent to uh, the activities that well, could possibly benefit from engaging with us, um, the Scouts, 4-H, local school after school programs such as the Boys and Girls Club. We've experimented and t reached out here in, in Greeley, Colorado and had a tremendous success working with those folks. They're always looking for programs. Uh, they do want to focus on STEM or STEAM um, as part of their curriculum and we bring a lot of those tools um, where some of the teachers, um, some of the uh, interns that work there may not have the skills themselves. Uh, they have the kids. Uh, they have access, and they need the help, and we're happy to, to reach out and participate with them. We emphasize we want it to be accessible, scalable, and flexible. Accessible means there's a big community out there, uh, particularly in today's uh, environment where there's fewer hobby stores, that just doesn't have access to a lot of the tools. Um, that uh, and they don't know where to go and find them and so one of the goals uh, for the group is to make things more accessible the other area is flexible um, as we talked about before we're all from different types of organizations doing different types of things we may have a different focus some of us may have a group of two or three people that are very young some people may have uh, late teens um, in a larger group some people may want to do a larger event so and that leads to scalability um, we'd love to have 
parents be able to do this as a homeschool effort. Um, at the same time, if a, a school or a church or a, another organization wants to have a camp on a weekend, uh, let's be able to uh, provide support for that too. So I wrote a, wrote a paper years ago, 2001, at the end of the page, I had two, two comments I made. And one was, this can be the most rewarding thing you do with the use. And the other one I says, if we don't do it, who will? And I think we're the start of that, and we got to do it. And I think that's important. And we are. Yeah. We have to set the tone as leaders by smiling and, and engaging the youth. And when the kid goes out the door at the end of a model railroading meeting, if he's smiling and looking at his parents and enjoying the day, they'll be back the next time. If we as leaders do not provide quality activities and so forth for these kids, they'll say to their parents, I'm not interested in coming back next time. One of the benefits of the meeting, uh, we had solicited uh, all the attendees to provide some of their information, what worked for them, and we handed out booklets at the meeting, um, and essentially a chapter on everybody's documentation. And uh, of course, uh, Youth and Model Railroading has a very sophisticated document to help certify their kids on the industry. Um, but the most important thing from the meeting itself was just communication. It's hard when we've got people from Utah and New Mexico and in Colorado. We're hours away from each other, and we meet, you know, if we're, if we're lucky, two, three times a year, if we can consolidate and meet, meet somewhere. So communication is key. And so we opened the doors for that. Uh, we also, uh, everybody brought to the table some ideas. You know, I heard ideas I'd never heard before. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they were available. And so now that we can uh, uh, get our organizations to pursue some different avenues, and uh, I really think the uh, group today one plus one will equal three or four or five. Yes. And, and we left with a mission and vision statement um, that talks about uh, where the group wants to go going forward. Uh, it was pretty obvious. We have some other organizations that are uh, focused on the hobby that we need to communicate with and help get them engaged. And then we're looking at meeting perhaps by the end of April and uh, instead of talking in um, broad terms, in visionary terms, we want to create a discrete action item. So we would appreciate any feedback anybody has that can help um, guide us and help uh, save us some unnecessary effort reinventing the wheel. If, if folks have some feedback, um, we'd appreciate that feedback and we'll take it into consideration to put together a common set of tools um, that everybody can benefit from understanding that every club is different, the museum here in Greeley is different, so we can't do everything the same way, but we can all learn from each other's approach and, and benefit from it. Anybody that would like to send comments or uh, ask questions, my email address is alhovey at comcast.net, or you can use my cell phone at 505-459-8087. Thank you.